What's up slackers? Welcome to Book Cheats. Today we'll be talking about To Kill a Mockingbird Chapter 9. So at the beginning of this chapter, Scout is in the schoolyard and her fists are clenched. She's super pissed at this kid named Cecil Jacobs because Cecil Jacobs said that Atticus, Scout's dad, was a black person lover. Oh hell no! This book is based in the 1930s so they clearly said black person in the book. Cecil says that Scout's dad is going to defend a black person. Jem comes out and Scout asks Jem if this is true. Jem told Scout that she should ask Atticus what was going on. So when Scout got home from school, Scout asked Atticus if he defended black people. Atticus kind of chuckled and said that of course he did. Scout asked if all lawyers defended black people and Atticus told her that all lawyers do. Atticus explained to Scout a little more about what was happening and he said that Judge John Taylor assigned him a case where he was in charge of defending a guy named Tom Robinson. He said that Tom Robinson went to the same church as their cook Calpurnia and that Calpurnia says that Tom's a really good guy and he would never do the thing that his charges said that he did. Luckily, the judge, John Taylor, postponed the trial till this next summer. Atticus also explained that a lot of the people in town wanted Atticus to lose the case on purpose or to not defend Tom Sawyer at all because he was black. Of course I'm gonna... Oh, he's a black man. Scout asked that if everybody in town wanted him to drop the case, why didn't he do it? Atticus explained that if he dropped the case, he wouldn't be able to hold his head high. And Atticus said that Scout was going to get a bunch of crap at school, and that he hoped that Scout would be able to resist beating anybody up and instead fight with her head rather than her hands. Scout asked if they were going to win the case, and Atticus said no they wouldn't. Scout was shocked and asked him then why? Atticus said he was taking this case and going to defend Tom because if he didn't, he wouldn't be able to hold his head high and his conscience wouldn't let him drop this case. There's two ways to do anything, the right way and the wrong way. If you want to be right, do things the right way. Scout said that Atticus reminded her of their cousin Ike, who was a veteran of the Civil War, who fought for the Confederates, and whenever he would come over once a year, he would talk about how they should still fight in spirit. When Scout got back to school, Cecil kept picking on Scout over the whole trial thing, but Scout stayed strong because Atticus asked her not to fight anybody, and she stayed strong for three weeks. After three weeks, Christmas came around, and Scout was super excited to see their Uncle Jack. Uncle Jack was Scout's favorite relative because he was so funny and so loving, and even though he was supposed to be a doctor, he never really acted like a doctor. Scout wasn't as excited to see Atticus's sister, Aunt Alexandria, and her husband Jimmy, and their grandson Francis. She said the only thing that was okay with going to Aunt Alexandria's house was that she cooked really well. Uncle Jack was the first relative that Scout saw, and they went to the train station. And when Uncle Jack got off the train, he had two presents in his hands. Scout rushed up to him and asked what the presents were, and Uncle Jack joked that it was none of her business. Jim asked Uncle Jack about his cat, Rosa Almer. Rosa Almer. Uncle Jack reached into his coat jacket and produced a few pictures of the cat, and Jim and Scout laughed as they looked at the cat and joked about how fat it was getting. As Scout was talking to Uncle Jack, Scout kept cussing because Scout was trying to use swear words to show Atticus that she was picking up bad words at school and she thought that if Atticus thought she was picking up dirty language at school, he wouldn't make her go to school anymore. Fuck you, Dango! You kiss at my dick, bitch! At dinner, Scout asked Uncle Jack to pass the damn ham. Uncle Jack was shocked and he asked Scout to meet him after dinner. After dinner, Uncle Jack explained to Scout that she shouldn't talk like that and she should only swear only under the most extreme provocation. Uncle Jack told Scout that she should try to act like a lady and that he didn't want Scout to swear in front of him at all. The next day was Christmas and Scout and Jem rushed downstairs to see what the presents were that Uncle Jack had brought. They opened the gifts and both gifts were two air rifles. <laughs> 
that Atticus had asked Uncle Jack to buy for them so they wouldn't find any presents in the house. They were super excited about the gifts. Atticus kind of had to yell at them to let them know that they couldn't shoot it in the house and that they had to be extremely responsible with them or he would take them away. Scout was already imagining shooting Francis with the air rifle. Atticus told the children that they were to leave the air rifles home while they went over to Anne Alexandria's for dinner. So the four of them hopped in the car and drove over to Finch's Landing. Anne Alexandria and Uncle Jimmy lived in Finch's Landing and they lived in the old house that their ancestor Simon Finch had built. Simon Finch was the guy from the first chapter who had created the family wealth for the Finch family. The house had 360 stairs down a hill that led to a giant house right on the river. They got to the house and Jem immediately went off and listened to the parents' conversation and Scout was left to entertain Francis. Francis told Scout about all the stuff he got for Christmas and Scout tried to make Francis jealous that they got air rifles. Scout said that Francis was the most boring child she had ever met in her life. Anything that she told Francis, he would go off and tell his grandma, who in turn and Alexandria would go and tell Atticus. Aunt Alexandria would constantly nag Atticus about how he was raising Scout because she would come over in overalls and jeans and Aunt Alexandria thought she should come over in a dress or a skirt to be more ladylike. When dinner rolled around, everybody sat at the big table except for Scout. Aunt Alexandria would want Scout to sit separate so that she wouldn't act like a boy and she'd be more ladylike. Scout asked Atticus to ask Aunt Alexandria if she could sit at the table and Atticus explained that if you're a guest at somebody's house, that you sit where they tell you to sit. Scout said that all the men abuse at Aunt Alexandria's house was worth it because Aunt Alexandria would cook so well. After dinner, they all kind of sat in a daze, completely full from all the delicious food that they had eaten. Scout was sitting outside somewhere, and Francis annoyingly came over and sat by Scout. They got to talking, and Scout accidentally revealed that she and Dill planned to get married when they were older. Francis was shocked and said that Dill was a piece of crap and that he didn't have a place to live and that relatives would pass him around all year because nobody wanted him. Scout tried to defend Dill, and Francis said less than somebody who was raised by a black man lover. Again, that's exactly what they said in the book. Scout told Francis to take it back, and Francis kept kept repeating, Black man lover, black man lover, black man lover. Scout's anger escalated as Francis repeated this derogatory term, and she grabbed Francis in a chokehold. This is an effective hold right here! Francis wiggled out and ran off into the separate kitchen that was outside and hid inside the kitchen. Scout patiently waited outside like a shark waiting to catch its prey. Aunt Alexandria came outside because she heard all the ruckus and heard Scout say the word hell. And she asked Scout and Francis what was going on. Francis told his grandmother that Scout was keeping him in the kitchen and bullying him and said the word hell. Aunt Alexandria scolded Scout and told Scout not to mess with Francis anymore. Francis gained some confidence and came outside and started walking around arrogantly confident of his grandmother's verbal shield. Francis walked around and did whatever he wanted, making sure to look over defensively at Scout to make sure she wasn't going to rush him. And after he was sure that Scout was perfectly subdued by Aunt Alexandria's words, he repeated the phrase again. Black man lover. Scout flipped the lid and swung her left fist and caught Francis in the teeth. She started to wail on top of him and beat the crap out of him when everybody rushed outside. Scout was in a complete frenzy as she pounded on him. <laughs> Uncle Jack ripped Scout off of Francis and asked what happened. Francis sobbing said that Scout called him a whore lady and jumped on him. Uncle Jack was shocked and asked if this was true and Scout begrudgingly said, reckon so. Uncle Jack said that he told her that if she used foul language again, she would be punished. He went inside and got a stick. He whipped Scout several times, and Scout rushed over to Atticus for comfort. Atticus said it's about time that she go home, and they all got in the car and, and drove home. When they got home, Scout rushed up the stairs and hid in her room. After some time, Uncle Jack came up the stairs and knocked on the door, and Scout yelled for him to go away. Uncle Jack said that if he kept talking to her like that, he was going to whip her again. 
Uncle Jack came into the room and Scout hid in the corner with her face towards the corner. Hey there, little girl. Uncle Jack asked Scout if he still if she still hated him, and Scout politely asked Uncle Jack to go away. Uncle Jack tried to defend himself and said that Scout completely deserved what she got. And Scout defended herself and said that she didn't deserve those lickings. Uncle Jack was confused and asked her why she didn't deserve those. And Scout said that Uncle Jack was a really nice person, but that he didn't really understand much. She explained further and said that Atticus, he asked for both sides of the story before he punishes one or the other. She told Uncle Jack that he didn't even give her a chance to defend herself before he licked her. Scout explained further that Uncle Jack had somewhat given her permission to use cuss words because he told her that she was to only use curse words only under the most extreme provocation and that she was provoked enough to beat the hell out of Francis. <laughs> Uncle Jack let Scout explain further and Scout said that Francis kept calling Atticus a black man lover and that he said that Atticus would be the ruin of the whole family. Uncle Jack was shocked and said that he was going to drive over there that night and discipline Jack and make sure that he got the stick and beat a few times too. Scout stopped him and asked him not to do anything. Uncle Jack was shocked because Scout didn't want Francis to get punished when he was at fault too. Scout explained to Uncle Jack that Francis was already punished because she beat the crap out of him and that she didn't want Atticus to know that she had lost her cool over the whole situation where Atticus asked her not to fight anybody. Scout didn't want Atticus to be disappointed in her and so she asked Uncle Jack not to tell Atticus what really happened. Scout looked down at her hands and they were still bloody from beating up Francis and she asked Uncle Jack if he could bandage her hands. Uncle Jack, feeling really bad, said that there wasn't a person more in the world that he would love to bandage their hands than Scout. As Uncle Jack was bandaging up Scout's hands, Scout asked him what whore lady meant. Uncle Jack was embarrassed and instead changed the subject and told a funny story. After bandaging up Scout's hands, Uncle Jack went downstairs to talk to Atticus and Scout hid at the top of the stairs to listen in on their conversation to make sure that Uncle Jack wasn't going to betray her trust and tell what really happened. Uncle Jack tells Atticus that he plans on never having kids because Scout explained clearly that he wasn't very good with kids. Uncle Jack said to Atticus that Scout didn't even understand half the stuff she said and told him that she asked what whore lady meant. Atticus asked Uncle Jack if he explained what that meant and Uncle Jack said no and that he just told her a funny story. Atticus was a little bit pissed and said that children are still learning and that if they ask a question you should tell them straight on. They changed the subject. Uncle Jack asked Atticus how the case was going. Atticus said that it was worse than he could imagine and that he knew that Jem would be able to take the pressure but that he hoped that Scout would be able to and that he worried about her. He thought that Scout was going to snap at anybody at school and beat a bunch of people up and that he hoped that she could be strong. After saying this, Atticus shouted up the stairs for Scout to go to bed and Scout was really shocked that Atticus knew that she was listening in. Scout says that it wasn't until years later that she realized that Atticus wanted her to hear every word that he said that night about the case and about her. And that concludes the chapter. Thanks so much for watching Book Cheats. Please leave that like and subscribe. If you have any questions from your homework, leave a comment down below. You guys have an awesome day and slack on.